Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. So now the question is, why, why do these people, even after giving the evidence, why all this evidence that I've shown here, including the evidence that I'll show you, certificate templates, why nobody does anything? Here's the, do you know that almost all, all, almost all, not everyone, all, uh, people in the Middle East, almost 90%, you could say, have fake degrees. You're talking of, Arabs, uh, Emiratis, because they want promotion. There are managers, there are engineers, there are doctors, there are people who want to migrate to Canada, Australia, uh, New Zealand. You know, there are psychologists, there are doctors abroad who have fake degrees. You just have to Google, you will find these videos there. Even someone as simple as a gym instructor, even a teacher, they have fake degrees. Do you even know this, that marriage, stay with the Marriage also, fake degrees are there. You can have adoption fake uh, documents that your child. Forget that. At the higher level, you're talking of Harvard, you're talking of Yale, you're talking of Oxford, you're talking of doctors, uh, surgeons, government officials, big ones, big ones, not small ones. And that's where it even goes to passports. This, this is a big business. Man. In fact, you know, all these events that run in the Middle East, you know, this two-day seminar, three-day seminar, uh, empower your life and all that. They, what these guys do is, they don't actually work in UAE. They stay in South Africa, they stay in UK, they, they just have this dummy company. And before they come, they start marketing within their circle of friends and people. I know because I've done this. I've gone to these seminars. I, I paid 85,000 dirhams to get certified only to find out that, you know, they call these people uh, within their circle. They keep it a very private event. They organize in a five-star hotel like address. I've done this. I tour these certificates. I have them. I, I have, uh, I showed you some of them. I have many more. Okay. So they'll have this uh, event 15 days in an address hotel or some five-star hotel. You can see it in the newspapers. Sometimes they have a press release. Convocation. They call it convocation. They have done it in Palm Atlantis, they have done it in Burj Al Arab, they have done it in Address Hotel. They will only do it in five-star places like Shangri-La Hotel and all that. They will bring even a minister. They will bring some big VIP. They will bring some big local guy, big influence. And they will pay them like 100,000 to half a million. They will pay them. So when you have such a big name, let's say for example, I bring the minister of uh, a country. I paid him one million. Do you think the police is going to come and check? Hey, local police. Hey, you know, I want to check what you're doing. No. With such power and money, nobody has the balls. Okay. Now, the bigger question is, but Lloyd, why is nobody doing anything about it? Why is nobody doing anything about it? Consider this. I passed on all the information, all the information to government, to police, CID, to, you know, media. Why nobody did anything? Number one is all of them get a cut. All of them get cut. Whether it's an embassy, whether it's a consulate, every document, let's say for example, every document that you just have to sign, okay, you get $500 or $100. If you finish five documents a day, uh, let's say $100 into five, $500. You finish 10 documents a day, $1,000. Calculate 1000 per month. How much is that? Okay. Next one. You know, these people who migrate, these people who migrate abroad, uh, the people who are doctors, people who are politicians, after they issue this certificate to them, there is another group that takes this information from these people and they are either the police or they are the legal people, the legal, you know, they perform this undercover. They can be undercover journalists, whatever. Then let's say, for example, 
I gave Ramesh a fake degree and he migrated to Canada. Ramesh, okay, just the name. Now I pass the information on to these guys. This legal team will call up Ramesh in Canada. Hi Ramesh, how are you doing? Ramesh, we just want to know that we checked your uh, documents and we found them to be fake. And uh, now we'll have a criminal investigation on you. Most probably your citizenship will be revoked. You'll be asked to leave Canada with your family and you'll be jailed. Now, what do you think is going through Ramesh's mind? Oh shit, what do I do? He'll cry and this and that. Please, I'll, I'll do anything. Then he says, Ramesh, uh, you know, I don't know if I can do anything. Uh, uh, please help me, please help me. Uh, Ramesh, you know, I have to do my job, man. Uh, so uh, please, uh, I'll do anything, anything. Uh, okay, uh, let me think, let me think about it. Let me. Then he says, then after two, three days, he calls him when this guy's dead under stress and all that. He said, see, Ramesh, um, if I have to do something, there are people I have to pay others. They are not going to keep quiet. You know, it's not for me. It's for them. Uh, sir, whatever, whatever you say, sir. Okay. So this guy to issue the fake degrees took $10,000. Now, when he calls Ramesh to protect his ass, he'll take 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, whatever. Oh, sir, I don't have the money. Okay, Ramesh, then we'll have to proceed with the criminal case. No, 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 sir, whatever. See, the thing is, because when they issued the certificate, they took all the information. How much property he has, how much house he has, how much gold he has. Every, you know, they'll take whatever information they can. Whatever. They'll transmit this information to this guy. This guy will blackmail Ramesh. And then, if you have a house, they'll make you sell the house. If you have a property, they'll make you sell the property. They will harass the daylights out of you. The daylights until like even, uh, you know, these credit uh, card companies that have to get the people to pay back. They also play all this. So this is why these ministers or police or whatever, they don't do it. But then the question is why the media doesn't do anything? Why the media? Lord, shouldn't the media be doing? You know, the ads that they place in Gulf News, Kalish Times, Malayalam Manorama or whatever, all these uh, newspapers, these newspapers, magazines, they run on revenue. You think they're going to shoot themselves in the fucking foot and say, no, 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 we will be righteous people. India, the media runs on who pays them the more money. You know that if a politician pays them more money, the opposition party will only get negative news and everyone knows this. Sting operations in India have proved that uh, newspaper reporters, they take money to report negative or positive. Money talks. The newspapers per day, these guys used to spend from 1000, that is $300 or 1000 dirhams to 5000, that's $1,500 uh, per day. Just imagine per day they're paying this much money. So you think... You seriously think that when they're getting $1,500 or $1,000 per day per attestation company, per fake university company, per whatever, they're going to say, okay, we are getting $10,000 a day. No, no, no. We will support law. Truth will prevail. And no problem, maybe you don't have any money. No problem, we'll shut down. We will stand for truth. Are you stupid? Today, Revenues are declining. Everything is online. Everything is for free. How will they sell a newspaper? How will they pay salaries? So that is why even after telling Gulf News, College Times, all the media, every possible media, radio stations, have, nothing happened. Nothing happened. So what is the conclusion? What's the conclusion for everything that I've shared with you? There are doctors with PhDs who are migrated abroad, who are in India, who are all over the world, doctors with fake degrees, engineers with fake degrees, managers with fake degrees, government officials with fake degrees, people who have migrated with their families with fake degrees. Okay. There are people with fake passports. I have seen with my eyes. Okay. It's too big. It's too big a fucking giant. That's why if you see these newspapers, you know, when they have this convocation, when they have these big events, why do they bring these ministers? Why do they bring these government officials? Why do they bring superstars? Why do multi-level marketing bring ministers and film actors to legitimize too, so that they tell people indirectly, don't fuck around with me. 
I can bring this guy. Do you know you can get a superstar? Any superstar, whether it's Amitabh Bachchan, Mamuti, Mohan Lal, uh, Richard Gere, Arnold Schwarzenegger, even Bill Clinton. You pay him the right amount of money, they'll come, they'll do their shit and they'll go. Uh, people just want money. I've seen directors of governments, directors. You, do you know this? In fact, do you know this? This is what, when they're talking, you can, I don't want to take the name of this minister, very powerful, very fucking powerful minister from India. Per signature is two point some six million dollars, 2.6 per signature. And it seems per day they have two to three signatures. I'm not even exaggerating that much money. Obviously, you have to pay other people to keep them happy. So it's not two million net. But that's the kind of power and that's the kind of money that they have. I've seen people who are fish sellers selling fish to supermarkets. I've seen people who are selling ordinary stuff like cheap sunglasses or um, even thermocol, woodworks. You know, guys who are driving trucks, but they know Arabic and they know English. They are doing attestation services illegally. You know, the attestation services is just so fucking shit. You go and meet this guy, the right guy. He's sitting there. He knows you. Ah, okay, okay. I give along with the document, you pay the charges. Plus you give a little bit extra. Stamp, stamp, stamp. Okay, okay. Come after the seven days. And that money that is given there. Everyone gets one cut, one cut, one cut, one cut. By the time the whole thing comes, this. this fake, these fake, this is fake. This is nothing but fake, man. This is fake. I've, I've never done a degree. I've, I've, this is Bachelor of Business Management. This is, you know, University of Mumbai. See this. See this. This is all fake. But it's stamped. It is stamped to make it legal. I never use this for anywhere. It is only at the age of, I think, 20, 21, just to get a visa. After that, obviously I made my friends and that's why I was never uh, at a big position. I, uh, the certificates which I have, but I gave back and it didn't, I had one for science, for chemistry. I even had a PhD. I done a PhD, but then I decided who am I fooling? Dr. Loy Masiro, I wanted to, you know, Put it. In fact, this guy, if you check his Facebook, uh, he has from Harvard also. It's money talks, man. His website is still there. His company is still there. He is still there. And the bullshit that they show, you know, is unbelievable. They, they just keep telling people, don't you want to migrate? Don't you want to go abroad? What about your promotion? You're doing this for your family. You're doing it to serve other people. Uh, people will, you know, they use this. They use this just to take advantage. If a bathroom cleaner can become a doctor, if he can bring government officials from India, from the Middle East, if you have your staff, you buy them a house, you buy them a land, you get them married, you give them interest-free loans, do you think anybody is going to put you in jail? Do you think anyone's going to say, no, we will stand for the truth? I told you what he offered me, 10,000 dirhams. That's $3,000 plus Range Rover, plus three bedroom house, plus, um, you know, my own studio setup, plus servants. You think I wanted to shoot myself in the fucking foot when I was getting all this money? They, today, you need uh, this fake papers for promotion, for marriage, for respect from society, from family. Uh, why do you think nowadays doctors are making so many mistakes? Why do you think engineers are making buildings which catch fire easily or which demolish? Or why do you think go uh, the government is filled with corrupt people or holding on to their power? We all know what the fuck is happening. We all know what the fuck is happening. Like for example, the September 11. Uh, you ask anyone, how did it happen? How did Guys in a mountain with fucking goat herds who were with a goat in a mountain in Afghanistan or Taliban, whatever, they managed to attack 
the most secure country in the world with the best technology, with the most advanced AI, highest information. Does it make sense to you? Here's another question. Why do you think US said weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, even though there was none? Nobody questioned them after they do. Why did they attack Iraq? Why did Halliburton, all these companies, why did they get the oil uh, uh, contracts? Why nobody questioned that? Why nothing is happening in Syria? Why US is, oh, we will do for peace in Iraq, but we'll not do for peace in Yemen and uh, Syria? Why? See, this is all a game of fucking politics, man. In Africa, so many people are dying. Watch this movie, Hotel Rwanda. Just watch the movie, Hotel Rwanda. Millions of people in Africa are dying. US is not bothered. Germany is not bothered. Uh, France is not bothered. Nobody is bothered. Why? Because it doesn't benefit their country. It doesn't benefit the votes that they get. So why the fuck go there? Go to a country where you can get fucking oil. Go to a country where you can loot, plunder and get contracts. You think all the politicians are honest? You think all the politicians uh, don't have other companies which are getting special preference? Like, for example, you think the fast food giants, they don't control the government. They don't have billions to say fast food is healthy. Kellogg's conflicts with so much sugar is healthy. Milk is healthy. Beef is healthy. See, we live in a day and age where money talks, power talks. For example, if you still don't believe me, in the UAE or in the Middle East, okay, Tell me, honestly, you think there's no prostitution? Nobody knows where are the prostitutes. You think at 3 a.m. in the morning, after the nightclubs close, you can't recognize who's a prostitute? How do these prostitutes come? From where do they come? You think the, the police doesn't know, the CID doesn't know, the intelligence doesn't know that they are prostitutes? You think there is no drugs? You think there is no alcohol? You think there's no racism? You think the news media is not controlled? You think everyone's goody goody? You think these hypermarkets, these giants, these pharmacies, which are like um, medical centers, which are giants, these owners who are getting Padma Shri, you can't buy it. You can't get, you can't buy an award of being an enterprising entrepreneur. You can't buy it. You think there is no black money at all? You know, these people are investing millions and billions. Why do you think uh, the Middle East, especially UAE, got caught for money laundering? Why was that slapped and magically it got removed? Just check uh, UAE human rights. There's no human rights abuse. There is nothing happening in Sonapur. There's no laborers being cheated. You think in UAE, if you put anything negative, the or forget UAE, Kuwait, Bahrain, Oman, Saudi. You put anything uh, negative about the government, you think you'll be spared. Example, forget that. Go to US. If you're a powerful president like Obama, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't get the name of this Indian guy. Dinesh D'Souza. The guy's name is Dinesh D'Souza. He had written about um, against Obama. Now, Obama is supposed to be a good guy. Dinesh D'Souza, this guy, wrote against Obama. Now, Obama is supposed to be a good guy. Guess what? Dinesh D'Souza got a criminal case put against him and he got indicted for some criminal uh, charges, even though he was innocent. And uh, why did that happen? Because he dared to speak against a powerful guy like Obama. And after Donald Trump came into power, Dinesh D'Souza got pardoned. So the point what I'm trying to tell you is, if someone is very, very powerful, it can be a politician, it can be a film actor, it can be a film actress, it can be anyone. If someone is very powerful and you talk about them, you, you will not live to see the next daylight. See, the thing is, there are so many things which are happening from slavery to racism to drugs, alcohol, prostitution, illegal stuff. It's all going on. The fact of the matter is, the amount of power, the amount of money that is involved is far greater than good. And given a choice between good and bad, people generally like to be bad because when being bad, there's a lot of money involved, a lot of power involved. And understand this much, even politicians, if there's the do the right thing, 
and let's act as if you didn't see, you take the money, keep quiet. People prefer the second one. So the point I'm trying to tell you is what was the, the main purpose of this video is just to tell you that, you know, all the importance that people give for degrees, two year degree, three year degree, five year degree, people die, people study, people kill themselves, they study. Um, it's all shit, man. It's all fucking shit. End of the day, if you have the right contacts, if you have the right connections, if you have the money, if you have the power, um, you can do anything. This guy is still there, he's making millions. He is still doing. The newspapers have the evidence, the police has the evidence, CID, everybody has. Nobody is doing jack shit about it. It was even put in the papers. Nobody is doing a jack shit. So, why to do, why to bother? People know what is going on. If they want to stop it, they can stop it. But as long as people are getting nice money, their hands are getting greased, why the fuck to bother? And when you have big powerful contacts whom you are ready to pay millions in bags, who the fuck cares? So I thought I'd finally share with you the truth about these fake degrees. It's all fake. I've kept them as collection. It's all fake. Attested by the government. <laughs> I gave copies to the police, to the CID, to the government, to heaven. nobody fucking cared. So I kept it as bonus mark sheets and all that, which I never applied for <laughs> with authentic signature of the government people. And so anyway, this is my confession. Let me know what do you think in the comment section below. Like I always say, like the video and like it, don't like it, don't like it. And yeah, please do support me because I do whatever I can to bring the reality um, to people. Please support the channel uh, because such videos take a lot of time. They take a lot of time, a lot of effort. I'm doing it as a public service. So please do support um, whatever, $1, $5, $10, whatever. Pay via PayPal to LloydLloydMesita.com. And um, yeah, if you have to share any information with me, it'll be kept confidential, share it via WhatsApp, or you can share it via my email. So I hope this video gives some insight into the reality. And uh, as promised, I told you I'll share the truth. Well, here's the truth. Live from LoyMesita.com, who's LoyMesita and Think Personal Branding signing off for now. Take care. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best.